This is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome you to the evening services of our church for Sunday, February the 6th. Per usual, we'll be singing a few songs of praise to the Lord. We will be observing the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that uh, I hope uh, you will get something from and you will be uplifted and you'll have something to take with you through the evening. We sing from Songs of Faith and Praise. And if you don't have one of those books, I will let you know the title of the song. And maybe if you have your device, you can quick uh, bring it up and uh, sing along with us. The first song is number 202. The title of this song is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. If the music sounds enchanting, uh, it is by Ludwig von Beethoven. 202. <laughs> joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before the opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy stars. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art living and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us, brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. And if you would turn to number 183. 183, one of my very favorite songs, Lord of All Being, Throned Afar. 183. Lord of all being, from afar, thy glory flames from sun and star, center and soul of every sphere, yet to each loving heart how near Son of our 
light, thy quickening ray, sheds on our path the glow of day. Star of our hope, thy sovereign light, Cheers the long watch is of the night. Our midnight is thy smile withdrawn. Our noontide is thy gracious dawn. Our rainbow hearts thy mercy sign. All save the clouds of sin are thine. Two pair of minds for the Lord's Supper. If we would turn to number 335. 335. In memory of the Savior's love. 335. In memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast where every humble contrite heart is made a welcome guest by faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath this banner thus we sing the wonders of his love and hear and disobey by faith the heavenly feast of When we gather to worship on the Lord's Day, which is Sunday, the first day of the week, uh, we are told to do various things. We're told to sing praises to the Lord. We're told to get into his word. We're told to pray. And perhaps the, the crowning touch of uh, the reason we gather together on the Lord's Day is found in the 20th chapter of Acts in the seventh verse where uh, it was written for us that they gathered together on the first day of the week to break bread. Uh, in the last night of Jesus's life uh, at Passover, he gathered together with his disciples and he broke bread with them. He instituted the supper of the Lord that we call the last supper, that we call the Lord's supper, that we call communion. And it's at this time that we are able to literally commune with God through his son, Jesus Christ, who made that wonderful and perfect sacrifice for each one of us. The song that we said, that we just sang, uh, said, by faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. Let's pray for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your master plan that came down to you sending Jesus to us. His teachings, his miracles, all the goodness that he spread. And finally, the sacrifice 
that he made, changing from the old covenant to the new covenant, that Jesus made the sacrifice uh, and sacrifices of animals and grains would no longer be needed because Jesus made that wonderful sacrifice. We're grateful that he gave up his body that we might live. And as we partake of this bread, we think of that. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Later in the song, in memory of the Savior's love, it says, the cup and token of his blood that was for sinners shed. That's what we think about when we take the fruit of the vine. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful uh, for the uh, understanding that the blood of animals would no longer be needed in sacrifice because Jesus gave up his precious blood. He gave that blood up that we might live. He shed his blood that our sins might be forgiven. Each time we partake, we just pray that we would remember this sacrifice, the blood that was shed, and what it means to us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We come to the portion of our service that deals with giving back to the Lord. I will uh, briefly touch on this in my message uh, this evening. And um, giving back to the Lord means that as Christians, we are certainly appreciative of all that's been done for us. And we are also in the realization that in order to carry on the work that needs to be carried on, that uh, these monies would be used. We know in the first century that they gave money uh, to people who uh, did not have any food where there was famine. Uh, they gave money to feed the poor and uh, we ought to be doing the same. We ought to be giving so that others would be enriched by what we give back. Let's pray. Help us dear Heavenly Father as we give to give with an open mind and an open heart. Help us to remember that Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice for each one of us. All that we're asked is to give as we have prospered because we know that you have given us the talents necessary to prosper. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. We have one more song that we're going to sing. That song is number 722. I like this song too. It's entitled, Let the Beauty of Jesus Be Seen. 722. Let the Beauty of Jesus Be Seen. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All is wonderful passion and purity. May his spirit divine all my being refine. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. When somebody has been so unkind to you, some words spoken that pierces you through and through, Think how he was beguiled, spat upon and reviled. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. From 
from the dawn of the morning till close of day. In example, in deeds, and in all you say, lay your gifts at his feet, ever strive to be sweet. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. I hope that you enjoyed the song services, much as I enjoyed singing these songs. Uh, I know the Lord was praised in our song, and I know that uh, we should be uplifted by what the Lord has uh, done for us. If you would please, uh, as we start our lesson this evening, if you would turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11. Peter says, He who would love life and see good days let him refrain from let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from see, speaking deceit let him turn away from evil and do good let him seek peace and pursue it this evening i would like to talk for just a few moments about progress <laughs> progress what exactly does that mean? Hmm. Well, to me, progress means moving forward. Maybe moving forward to new things that we haven't done before, but making inroads in our life as we improve and as we mature. <laughs> Somewhere rattling around in my brain, and unfortunately, sometimes it's a blessing and a curse that I remember some things from long, long time ago. Um, General Electric, one of the big appliance and uh, makers in this country through the 40s, 50s and onward, still today, um, did commercials on television for various TV shows. <laughs> Interestingly enough, their spokesman was a, a B actor who, you know, starred in a lot of movies, whose name was Ronald Reagan. He was the spokesman for General Electric. And the slogan, and as many companies uh, have slogans, the slogan for General Electric was this, and I remember the words word for word for word. It said, at General Electric, Progress is our most important product. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I hope that kind of almost fits and dovetails into the lesson this evening. So, how are we doing in our lives as far as progress is concerned? You know what? Making big progress in life can be very, very joyful when we take some huge, big steps of improvement. But you know what? The interesting thing is that this just doesn't happen very often. Most progress that we make is made in small, incremental steps giant strides as great as they may seem to be, how pleasant they may seem to be, that happen on rare occasions, usually aren't the steps. That's usually not the progress that gets the world's work done. And I would promote to you this evening that 
the work of the world. And so let's personalize it. The work of you and I as Christians, the work of the church is done by little steps taken daily. Little steps taken daily. Some of you are probably uh, familiar with the Greek fable writer whose name was Aesop. And uh, as a matter of fact, we just call his stories Aesop's fables. Probably one of our favorite of Aesop's fables is the story of the tortoise and the hare. And the tortoise and the hare had a race. On the surface, it was a gross mismatch, wasn't it? If we've seen turtles and we've seen rabbits, we know which animal runs the fastest. And so we would probably say, advantage rabbit, he's a lot faster. With a couple of strides, he takes in an immense amount of territory. Whereas that turtle, all bound up in his shell, with his four little legs sticking out of the side, one leg, one leg, one leg, one leg, makes frustratingly small gains in territory. In the story, the hare ran in spurts. And every once in a while, the, the hare, the rabbit, made great amounts of progress. However, the hare didn't win the race. The tortoise won the race. It was won by the tortoise who wasn't capable of making these huge, big strides. But what the tortoise did was he kept at it. He kept moving slowly, taking whatever steps he could take. And the result was that the tortoise outperformed his flashier opponent. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. You know, very often when we try to make too much progress at one time, we get frustrated. I wouldn't doubt that the hare not only wasn't working from frustration, he was probably working from how much energy it took for him to make those quick strides over a period of time. As a runner, uh, as I was in my younger days, a distance runner, which was my form of exercise, I would get out on the roads and run, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight miles. Every once in a while, and I was in the country, a dog would approach. Well, here's what I found out, and I learned the lesson. Dogs, for the most part, are sprinters. I, on the other hand, was a distance runner. I planned on running six or seven or eight miles. The dog could not run at a sustained pace. The distance that I was going to run and so, even if the dog was faster than I was, I increased my pace a little bit, and it may have taken me 50 yards or 100 yards before finally I looked over my shoulder and the dog had quit. He was flashier, he was certainly faster, but he was not more persistent. I could make smaller progress, but make it over a longer period of time. In a similar way, 
real progress in life usually does not require doing big things that make headlines in the newspapers. It consists of doing little things, but doing them regularly. What things are they? Let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 11, because in this scripture, there are a couple of do nots and there are a couple of do's. He says, he who would love life and see good days. And to me, what that says is, Syme's own words getting uh, injected here. What that says to me is, he who would love life and see good days, that person that's going to make progress, right? If you're going to make progress, there are some things that you must do. He said, refrain your tongue from evil and your lips from seeking deceit. Things not to do. Let him turn away from evil thing not to do. Now it gets to the positive side and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. How tough are those things? Well, when we think about it, they're not all easy. Sometimes we speak when we should be quiet. Sometimes maybe we're quiet when we should be speaking. Sometimes through lack of patience, we don't pursue peace. And sometimes we have opportunity to do good and we don't take advantage of that opportunity. But see, these are small increments in life. I can only do one good thing at a time. And so if we're gonna do it, we need to do it and do it well. There's an old country song that says, do what you do, do well. <laughs> do what you do, do well. Let's make sure that in our lives that we're making progress. And this progress is incremental. We can't get everything done at one time. Little steps can often be more important than their size alone would indicate. Just as the Lord judges us very often on the level of sacrifice that is required. If we turn to Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, and these are a couple of very, very familiar verses. And start at verse 41. And it says, He sat down opposite the treasury and began serve, uh, observing how people were putting money into the treasury and how many rich people were putting in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which amount to a cent. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributors into the treasury. For they all put in out of their surplus, but she out of her poverty put all that she owned and all that she had to live on. I believe that we are judged on how much we sacrifice. Hmm. And by the way, uh, this may be a fairly large step, but usually those are small steps. It takes courage to give more than you think is available to you. Upon Jesus's death and when uh, they were going to take the body away. In Mark chapter 15, verse 43.
Mark chapter 15, verse 43. It says, Joseph of Arimathea came, a prominent member, let me get this, a prominent member of the council who himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. And he gathered up the courage and he went in before Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Joseph of Arimathea sacrificed the people on the council were the people that had Jesus crucified. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders of the day, Joseph of Arimathea was one of these, but he saw in Jesus something special. He saw Jesus as the Messiah. And so he was willing to sacrifice. He was willing to put his reputation on the line and look at those people at the council and said, you know what, I'm going to take this body and I'm going to put it in my own turn. When it takes courage to take even a small step, that courage, I believe, transforms the step into one that looms quite large, at least for me. And I think that's the way the Lord looks at it. Now, you know what? Let's get to our relationship with God. What does it take to have a, a good relationship with God? What do we need to do to have this good relationship? There is some small step that we could take and if we would just take it, that would be progress. If we did this seemingly insignificant thing, that would represent a move forward. We can't get close to God in just one big giant step or one big giant leap. And interestingly enough, this is the way that the devil is defeated. Our adversary, Satan, he doesn't want us to take any steps at all. He doesn't want to take us to take big steps. He doesn't want to, us to take little steps. But when we summon the courage and the love for God to do a small thing that's within our reach, I believe the devil is discouraged. So whatever else happens to you this evening, let's do one small thing out of our love for God. If we did that much, that would be progress. And making progress is what this very hard and difficult life is all about. I'd like to finish with a, uh, a saying that I read somewhere, and it goes like this. Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I'll try again tomorrow. If you didn't get it done today, there is tomorrow. And if we get it done tomorrow, that will be progress. I hope this lesson was interesting. I hope it was beneficial to each one of you. Uh, in our Christian lives, uh, progress is so very important. But if you're not a Christian, you haven't taken that step. And it is a big step. It is preceded by smaller steps as you hear the word and you learn. And those smaller steps take you to taking that larger step. And that larger step is accepting Jesus as your Savior, of repenting of your former life, confessing that Jesus is the Son of God, and being baptized for the remission of your sins. If you need to do that this evening, contact one of us so that we can help you. If you need to confess your sins one to another, please do that. And please, you know always that you can confess your sins to the Lord. Let's all pray together. 
Our God and Heavenly Father, bless this time that we've had together. Help us to understand that uh, making progress in this life, which can all, all uh, which is, which can sometimes be a very difficult one, but making progress even in small steps is what this life is indeed really about. Help us to think of that and help us to think of the small steps that we can take to have a better relationship with you, to have a better relationship with those that we love that will make our church and ourselves stronger and stronger. Be with us this evening. Help us to take these words into our hearts that they will be meaningful to us and meditate upon them. Continue to bless us. Continue to be with us. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men, oh, to rescue the souls of men.